السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وبه نستعين ونصلي ونسلم على خاتم الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا وحبيبنا وقدوتنا وإمامنا محمد بن عبد الله صلى الله وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن سلك طريقهم وسار على نهجهم ودعا بدعوتهم إلى يوم الدين أما بعد يقول الله تبارك وتعالى فهل ينظرون إلا الساعة أن تأتيهم بغتة فقد جاء أشراطها فأنا لهم إذا جاءتهم ذكراهم فاعلم أنه لا إله إلا الله صدق الله العظيم Honorable ulama of this blessed city the historic ancient city wherein Islam has commenced in this beautiful country the city of Cape Town Honored ulama beloved brothers and sisters in Islam what is the greatest gift we have? I have already heard an answer from the crowd. Iman. Iman in what? Iman in Allah Rabbul Izzati Wal Jalal. Belief in the unseen and the fact that we have been chosen by our names, my name, your name, to be from the Ummah of the one whose name is the greatest. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam The best of creation Afdalul khalqi wa akramul rusuli The best of creation without a split doubt Higher than any angel that can ever exist Higher than Jibreel alayhi salatu wa salam The most honored of all the anbiya alayhi salatu wa salam Are we not honored To have been chosen to be from amongst his ummah Wallahi if we do not feel this honor There is something wrong with us if we do not feel the bond that we have with one another, the common factor that we have between us, the shahadatul islami wal iman, if we do not feel the bond with one another because of that kalima, there is something wrong with us. The kalima we share is the greatest gift we ever have and anyone would ever have. Wallahi, if you have food and drink and air, but you do not have the shahada, you have nothing. And if you do not have food, no drink, no air, no clothing, no accommodation, but you have kalimatul haq, wallahi you have the solution for the dunya and the akhirah. Wallahi you have been given something that no one has ever been given. La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. That is my ticket to Jannah. That is your ticket to Jannah. Wallahi if you don't have that ticket, you stand no chance to enter Jannah. So let us utter in chorus, La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah. That is the driving force between our, ourselves and our iman. That is the driving force between us and Jannah. Wallahi thumma wallah, if you lose that, you have lost everything. And if you have that, you have everything. May Allah grant us the ability to hold fast to it. It is the only thing we have that we can be granted hope through. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us steadfast on that shahada. May He grant us death with La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah, as the last words before we leave. Man kana akhiru kalamihi min dunya La ilaha illallah, dakhal al-jannah. The hadith explains itself. Whomsoever has uttered these words as the last words before they leave will definitely enter Jannah. La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When Abu Talib, the uncle of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was about to leave this dunya, he refused to accept Islam and Iman. So he had everything, but he did not have the ticket to enter Jannah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam looked at him and said, Ya Ammi, قُلْ كَلِمَةً أُحَاجُّ لَكَ بِهَا يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ Oh my uncle, utter, utter with your tongue, just utter one sentence, one statement, and I will fight your case on the day of Qiyamah. Just utter the term, لا إله إلا الله, 
Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My dear brothers and sisters, are we not gifted? Wallahi, Allah knows you personally. Today, if the president happened to know you personally, the people would regard you as someone very important. But wallahi, why do we forget the fact that Allah knows you by name, wallah? And He knows everything about you. He knows you personally. He loves you, Allah. He is waiting for you to turn to Him. What is the best day you can ever have? The best day you can have is the day you return to the Allah that created you. Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal. Tuhfatul Mu'min al Maut. The gift of a true believer is death because that is when he will have no more oppression, no more problems. That La ilaha illallah which he believed in will become the Yaqeen. He will see it on that day and he will see the benefit of it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the benefit on that particular day. I wish to raise before you the preparation for that day and a few signs that have occurred and will occur regarding the coming of that day. Remember one thing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Indeed, when the fixed and prescribed time of Allah regarding yourselves and regarding anything and everything, when it comes, it will not be delayed. إِذَا جَاءَ أَجَلُهُمْ فَلَا يَسْتَأْخِرُونَ سَاعَةً وَلَا يَسْتَقْدِمُونَ When the fixed hour of anyone comes, they will not be able to bring it or to delay it even by a split moment, nor to bring it forward even by a split moment. Your time is written. My time is written. Don't be fooled. Every breath you are taking is one breath closer to that time. La ilaha illallah. Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There are signs of qiyamah, my dear brothers and sisters. The signs of qiyamah are many. Some of them are good. Some of them are bad. When we say some of them are good, we mean... They are encouraging on their own, but they are worth being concerned about and worth being pondering over when it comes to discussing them and connecting them to Qiyamah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's very advent, the fact that he came was already a sign of Qiyamah. He said, بُعِثْتُ أَنَا وَالسَّاعَكَ هَاتَيْنِ I have been sent as close to Qiyamah as this. And he pointed with the two fingers. No other Nabi could do that because... Each Nabi was sent and another Nabi was going to come after him. But when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sent, who was going to come after him? No other Nabi. Ana khatamun nabiyyina la nabiyya ba'di. I am the final messenger. There is going to be no messenger after me. Anyone coming to you, telling you that I am a messenger of Allah, they are lying. But if they tell you I am a messenger of the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are speaking the truth. If someone comes to you and says, I have brought to you the message of the messenger, they are telling the truth. If they have come to you with haq, the ulama are regarded as warathatul anbiya. They are the heirs of the anbiya alayhimu salatu wasalam because they went in to see what the anbiya left and they took from that particular estate, if I can call it, of the anbiya alayhimu salatu wasalam. But if someone comes to you and says, I'm a nabi, as is happening today, then indeed they are lying. We need to stay far away from them. So the first sign of the coming of Qiyamah was the very advent of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because after him there is no Nabi. They will rather be Qiyamah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us peace on that day. If you have peace on the day of Qiyamah, you have peace forever. That is the peace that is required. But if you have pieces on that day, wallahi, then subhanallah, we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not make us from amongst those who will regret on that day. Remember, it is not too late to prepare for the day. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came with signs of qiyamah. There is a famous hadith known as hadith Jibreel alayhi salatu wa salam. I'm sure we've heard it. Where Jibreel alayhi salatu wa salam came and he sat with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with utmost respect and he began to ask him questions. And mal islamu, mal imanu, mal ihsanu, etc., etc., until he got to qiyamah. The response was mal mas'ulu anha bi a'lama min as-sail. When is qiyamah? was the question. The answer was the one who is being questioned does not know any more than the one who is questioning in this regard. It is only known by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he was asked, What are the signs of qiyamah? And an answer was given. 
We all know there are many signs of Qiyamah. Let me mention some of them. Zina will, in- will increase. Has that not come? Has zina decreased or increased? Tell me. It has increased, subhanallah. That is a sign of qiyamah already predicted by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Evil will increase. People will begin to compete in masajid. Yatabahan nasu fil masajid. What does that mean? That means, oh, that's my masjid. Oh, that's, that's my masjid. That's our masjid. That's their masjid. It's happening already. We are jama'at al-muslimin. We are together. We are one. We cannot say my masjid and your masjid. Masjid of Allah, the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even the one who contributed towards building it, wallahi. He cannot say it is my masjid. The minute he says that, he's heading in the wrong direction. May Allah guide us all. Yatabahan nasu fil masajid. People will compete. When it comes to masjid, oh, our masjid has this. Oh, ours has aircon. Oh, yours has a carpet which is two inches thick. Ours only has one inch thick. Or mine is going to have five inches more. That is not what we are meant to be doing, subhanallah. You want to build the, build the best masjid, build it for the sake of Allah. Not because the masjid down the road is any lesser than that. It does not necessarily mean that the better the masjid, the more acceptable your ibadah is. Nowhere did that happen at the time of Rasulullah sallallahu nor was it ever said in that manner. But we must understand that if we become materialistic, even regarding our deen, we are heading in the wrong direction. We become a statistic of qiyamah. A sign of qiyamah. We don't want to be walking signs of qiyamah. Let me give you some more signs of qiyamah. There were certain signs, subhanallah, that were mentioned at the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The sahaba used to ask themselves, have you understood what is meant by this? And some of them did not really comprehend because the times were not there. We have seen those signs today. Let me give you one of those. Antalida al amatu rabbataha. A woman will give birth to her boss. Subhanallah. So people might interpret it saying, you know, nowadays the women are giving birth, the children are becoming bosses. The children are ruling their women. That is one explanation. But let me tell you what is happening in the Western world, Wallah. Women who do not want the beautiful stretch marks on their stomachs. Wallahi, having a stretch mark on a belly for a woman is a sign of jihad. It is a sign that she has been through what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants her to go through. It is nothing to say that, oh, now my belly is ugly. A'udhu billah. May Allah save us from that attitude. Wallahi, if a woman has not had those marks on her belly, she may not have contributed towards the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, where he says, Tazawwaju al-waduda al-waluda fa'inni mukathirun bikum al-umama yawm al-qiyamah. Marry those women who are loving, who want to have children. I want to be through your effort. The Nabi who has the greatest number of ummatis on the day of Qiyamah, the greatest number of followers. How is that going to happen if we don't want stretch marks on our bellies? May Allah grant that to us. May He grant us children. May He grant our women folk good health. So what are the women of the West doing? They take the embryo, husband and wife. They make the egg and the sperms meet in a third party. They go to the Philippines or they go to Indonesia where there are poor people who need something, a little bit of money. And they say, look, we want to, we want to use your womb for nine months to do what? For the gestation period of our child and we will pay you for that. And what are these women doing? Out of desperation, they are renting out their wombs. Wallahi, I am telling you what is going on around us in the world. And then what happens nine months later, they get their payment. Have they not given birth to anything but their bosses? Subhanallah. They have given birth to a child who is not related to them. They have given birth to a child who has paid them or whose parents, whose biological parents have actually paid them. Is that not a sign of qiyamah? Tempering with the signs of Allah, with the creation of Allah. Shaitan is quoted to be saying, I will command them so that they will change the creation of Allah and tamper in it. That is a sign of Qiyamah. But wallahi, there are other signs of Qiyamah. 
which have also been mentioned, which are regarded as grave, dangerous, extremely major signs of Qiyamah. Wallahi, if I tell you, the hadith says there will come a time when everyone will eat interest. If they don't eat interest, at least the smell of it will come to their noses. Have we not got to that time today? We don't eat it. We believe it's haram. We believe everything against it. Most of us, alhamdulillah, may Allah make us strong. But the scent of it has come to our noses. Whether we like it or not, it's a sign of qiyamah. It was predicted, prophesied by Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whom we are followers of. Are we not fortunate to have been given the warning already? Let me give you another sign, dangerous sign. Dajjal will appear. Now someone might ask and say, no, when is Dajjal coming? A few minutes ago, I happened to listen to the khutbah in Makkah al-Mukarramah in front of the Kaaba. The Imam spoke on the same topic. That is where I was inspired what to speak on today. The signs of Qiyamah. I am happy to tell you that today this topic has been discussed in Makkah al-Mukarramah just an hour ago. In front of the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Dajjal was discussed. Let me tell you who is Dajjal. Al-A'war, the one-eyed devil who is going to come. He will have control. Remember, I am telling you something, but I want you to use your minds to think of our situation today. We are in a Dajjal-like situation. Though Dajjal himself is not in our midst, but his entire system has already fallen into place. He is preparing us and our children for the day he comes, Wallah. Shaitan is doing that on his behalf. Let me tell you, the Jal will come. He will have power. He will have money. He will have wealth. He will have food. He will have drink. The crops will be in his hands. The land will be in his hands. Economies will be in his hands. The entire dunya will be seemingly controlled by him. Seemingly, I say, because true control is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what will happen? People will be dying of hunger. They will be dying of thirst. They will be landless. They will have a lot of difficulty in terms of the dunya. And Dajjal will appear and he will say, Follow me and I will give you. What will I give you? I will give you food. I will give you drink. I will give you property. I will give you wealth. I will give you the whole dunya. Follow me and I will take you to where you want. Don't you want this dunya? And the weak, it is reported majority of the world, including the so-called Muslims, will follow. Why will they follow? Because of the hypocritical behavior that we are in today. We say we are Muslim. By what? By name. We come to the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the phone rings in the house of Allah. What do we plan? Where should I meet her? At the door. Come and pick me up at the door of the masjid. I will finish my Juma Salah at this time. Please come. We are planning zina from the masjid. A'udhu Billah. It is happening. Is that not a fact? Wallahi, it is happening. If not from within the masjid, then just after you leave the house of Allah. Are you not meant to be spiritually elevated? And what are we doing? So what the Jal is doing, using shaitan, or shaitan is doing for the Jal, you can put it either way. He is preparing the masses for the day he comes. Those mu'mineen, remember I said a lot of the Muslims will follow the Dajjal according to the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But those mu'mineen who have iman, that is what we said at the beginning. Our biggest gift is iman. Those believers who have iman, they will tell the Dajjal, learn from the lesson. I don't want money. I don't want food. I don't want drink. I don't want land. I don't want this dunya if you are giving it to me at the stake of the akhirah. I don't want it. If I have to trade my deen for dunya, I don't want it. If I have to trade justice for injustice, I don't want it. If I have to give you my shahada, la ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, for food and drink, I'd rather die hungry Knowing that I have died with shahada, did I not say a few moments ago that if you have the shahada and you don't have food and drink, wallahi, you've got everything. Understand it. Realize it. This dunya, we are here for a few years. Everyone who is seated in front of me, myself included, 
you cannot guarantee if you are going to come out of this masjid alive. Is that not correct? Put up your hands and tell me if you think you, think you are going to live forever. You will not. Put up your hands and tell me if you think you are going to walk out of this masjid and you are sure that you are going to come out breathing. You can't guarantee that. So remember one thing today. Our problem is a very big one. We are becoming from amongst the group slowly but surely who are so materialistic that all their decisions are based on the dunya. All their decisions are based on money, wealth, food and drink but not on justice, not on Islam, not on Iman. Wallahi, it is something we need to ponder about. Think about it, your major decisions you are making in your life. How are you making them? Are you compromising your deen because of the world? If that is the case, who knows? Our children might be the champions who will side with the Jal, unfortunately. Because what are we training them for? They see us as parents. All our decisions are made in the lines of the dunya. We are not saying divorce the dunya. That is out of a question. That is another extreme. No. Take from the dunya as much as you can for as long as it is halal and permissible for as long as you have not compromised your shahada and your kalima subhanallah hold fast to this kalima we read it out in this masjid mashallah and we will repeat it as many times in the day as we can send salutations upon muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam for indeed he will be waiting for you and me on the day of qiyamah and wallahi Good news to you, the faces we see here today, we are going to meet on Qiyamah. We are going to meet with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Do not doubt that for a split moment. Who is Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu? Was he not a Sahabi? Wallahi, we were not chosen to be from Sahaba in the dunya, but in the akhirah, it's not too late. We will be inshallah with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We will be with Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu. Don't doubt it for a split moment. If you are doubting it, your iman is weak. That gift you have, strengthen it. When you have a gem, what do you do? You shine it and you keep it protected. You make sure it is your treasure. The day you need it, you are going to boast it. We are not allowed to be arrogant and proud in this dunya. But in the akhirah, if you have died with this shahada, wallahi, you have the right to be proud. And if you have died without the shahada, you have died the death of a dog. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. So remember, today our decisions must be made correctly. One might say that Jal is going to come 10, 20, 30 generations down. We don't know. But prepare from now. How do we prepare? Make sure you train your kids. Have you read the Quran? First Jews, Allah says, أَمْ كُنْتُمْ شُهَدَاءَ إِذْ حَضَرَ يَعْقُوبَ الْمَوْتِ Were you witnesses when Ya'qub alayhi salam, when death approached him? What did he do? He gathered his children and he asked them certain questions to confirm that when he was gone, they would not be astray. How many of us have gathered our children around the fire or around the table? And we've told them, my dear children, I am a mu'min. I am a believer. I might die tomorrow. What are you going to hold up, up with? What are you going to stand with? Are you going to hold on to this kalima and shahada? Or are you going to leave it? Are you going to be from the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Or are you going to go astray? Please hold fast to this deen and don't be astray. If you have made a mistake or two, turn back to Allah. Don't lose hope. That is Allah. He is most merciful. He is waiting for us. We engage in tawbah because we are weak. We are men. We are supposed to engage in tawbah. But don't lose hope in the mercy of Allah. How many of us have called our children and told them this? Let us do it. It's not too late. Call your children for this ibadah. Great act of worship, Allah. And ask them a question and help them answer it. Tell them, please hold fast. You might have sinned a little bit here and there. But turn back to Allah. It's not too late. What will happen? Tell them that we tell the same thing to your children and their children and so on and so forth. So that 50 generations down when the Dajjal comes, Wallahi, myself and yourself would have already warned our offspring to say that when you base your major decisions, base them on deen and not on dunya. Subhanallah.
A few weeks ago, we had elections in Zimbabwe, where I come from. Many people based their, their decisions on what? On the economy. And they did not know the history of the land. They based their decisions on what else? On money, on the strength of the currency, on the price of bread and milk. At the expense of what? At the expense of La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My dear brothers and sisters, the reason I'm mentioning this is because there is justice on one side, even if you lose your economy in the process. And there is injustice on the other side, and you might become financially very strong because the Dajjal-like forces of the world will assist you in getting the dunya, but you have lost your deen. Subhanallah. So, remember one thing, base your decisions on deen, on Islam, on the shahada, and you will never be led astray. And remember sometimes, Allah will grant you with goodness, but many times when Allah has granted you, it is a test. It is a test. The hadith Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, the poor people will enter Jannah 500 years before those who have a lot of wealth. Why? I can tell you why. And I will end with this example. The reason is, you will have to give account of every penny and cent and rand you have. Where you got it, where you spent it, how you spent it, and so on and so forth. Remember when you enter the airport, you have nothing to declare. Which route do you go through? Green or red? The green route. Why? Nothing to declare. I'm a pauper. I'm walking straight through. Search my bags. Even if they search it, you're gone. You have nothing. But tell me, you come with overweight, 200 kgs of overweight, big, big bags, three people pushing your trolleys. How long are you going to take at the customs? You have to account for everything. They might even ask you, how did you externalize the foreign currency to buy all these things? They might ask you the question. So for dunya, we are worried. We prepare our answers. We have accountants in order to prepare the books for some organization known as SARS. We are worried. Wallahi. But for the akhirah, we don't bat an eyelid. We are not worried. How much we have done, what we have done, subhanallah, we don't even bat an eyelid. That is qiyamah. Prepare for it by engaging. How do we prepare for qiyamah? That's a question. By engaging in tawbah, admitting your guilt and making a turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not only will you save yourselves, but you will save your offspring. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, ku anfusakum, wa ahlikum nara. Save yourselves, O you who believe, and your families from the fire of Jahannam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us that power as an ummah. Wallahi, we sit in the masjid. Many a times we don't know who is next to us. I don't know his name or her name. I don't know who you are, who she is. That is a sign of weakness of the bond of the ummah. Today, inshallah, before we leave, try and find out one person whom you don't know in this masjid. Greet them, brother. What is your name? Who are you? And inshallah, you will find that bond of unity, inshallah, will increase. Make it a habit every Friday. Every time you come to the masjid, one person you don't know, greet them, shake their hands, tell them, my dear brother, my dear sister. Obviously, the sisters do it there on their own. The brothers do it here. It's not, it's not a field for marriage counseling and so on. But what we have, alhamdulillah, we need to consolidate. I may not know many of you, but wallahi, I have a bond which is thicker than blood, wallah. And I can die if it means sacrificing that particular bond. We will not sacrifice it. We'd rather die between us and the bond. What is happening today in Palestine? Wallahi, let's make dua. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them success. May Allah crush the enemies of Islam and the ummah. Remember what happened to those who tried to harm the Kaaba. Allah revealed an entire surah telling us the story that Allah has sent down certain birds that destroyed them. So the same way with us, let us build the unity and respect the ulama of the ummah. For indeed, respecting the ulama is a sign of iman. Because they are the ones who have gone out to study, to sacrifice five years, ten years, twenty years, to learn what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has taught. If we are going to respect them, in turn we have respected the deen of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and we will die with it. We need to respect one and all and we need to respect each other. Let's have a genuine feeling for each other and inshallah in that way we will have prepared for the akhirah. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyina Muhammad. Subhanallahi wa bihamdihi. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk.